Handling user input with a Discord bot written in Go. Hey everyone, my name is Brian Morrison. I'm a full stack developer and content creator here on YouTube and thanks for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to expand on our current Discord bot series where I'm gonna show you how you can actually uh, respond back to users and actually request feedback from them through direct messages. We're gonna start by expanding the bot and creating an additional subcommand called prompt. And what that's going to do is it's going to send a direct message to a user to ask them a simple question about what their favorite food is. We're going to then wait for the user to respond back to us log that response and store it for later on and then ask a follow-up question before we finally put everything together inside of a discord message embed and send it back to the original discord server where that question was asked if you're into this kind of content whether it's uh, full stack software development i specialize mostly in go and javascript uh, serverless stuff devops stuff do me a favor give my channel a subscribe subscribe to the channel <laughs> like the video share it with your friends and uh, let's hop over to uh, the code and see how we can uh, we can put this all together Every time our bot asks a user a question, we're going to store the responses inside of a struct, which is going to then be piped into a map. So we're going to start off by creating that struct at first. OK, so I'm going to type in type and we're going to name the struct answers. And again, it's going to be a struct. And then we're going to have three fields inside of the struct. The first one is going to be origin channel ID. And the reason we want this in here is because we're going to track the channel in which the questions were originally asked. So this way they can be sent directly back to that channel. OK, so that's going to be a type of string. And then we're also going to add the fields for the two questions that we're going to ask, which is going to be what's your favorite food and what's your favorite game. So we'll just uh, type in fave food and that's going to be a string and then fave game, which is going to be a string. Now, in order to track what users are currently um, being prompted for these responses, we're going to store them in a map. And what we're going to use as far as the key for that map is actually going to be the channel ID of the direct message that's being sent to the user. So let's create a variable that's going to hold that information now. I'll type in var responses is going to be map string, and then we're going to have answers as the struct that's going to be the value of that map. And then let's actually initialize this right when the application starts. So map is going to be set equal to map string and then answers and then some open curly open and close curly brackets next let's go ahead and add another sub command into our list that we have going here so we'll say if args one is double equal to prompt this is i guess the name of our sub command we're going to create a new handler in here of user prompt handler and then just like the two above it it's going to pass in the session and then the message information itself and if you're not sure what's going on here this is part of a series where we're building on top of a basic hello world bot i will drop a uh, link to the playlist if you want to start from the beginning in the upper right hand corner of this video so to quickly create this function i'm going to hold down command period and then and then generate that function signature down here we're going to get rid of uh, the unimplemented and get started fresh inside of here so this this handler is essentially going to do two things. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to create what's called a user channel. And this is essentially going to appear as a direct message between the bot and the person who had entered the command within Discord. And then the second thing we're going to do is decide if if the user is already answering questions. Ignore it. Otherwise, ask questions like that. So let's start by creating user channel and we'll just say we'll set a channel variable name there and an error to catch anything that goes wrong and the command for that or the the method for that is going to be s dot user channel create and we're going to pass in m dot author dot i oh, we're going to pass in m dot author dot id which is going to be the user id the discord user id for the person who entered this specific prompt and this is going to create that direct message between the bot and the user to catch the error let's just do f error is not equal to nil log dot panic and then we'll just pass in our error there not the best error handling but it works for the time being so the next thing we got to do is we have to check to see if an existing session exists inside or if a session already exists inside of our responses here and we can do that by using the channel id um, as the key again for the this map here so scrolling back down we will say so we can type in if underscore and the reason we're using an underscore for the first return value is because we don't necessarily care what the actual value of the map is what we more or less want to do is check to see if it does exist so the second variable that's returned by what we're about to do is going to be a boolean and that it's going to be true if the entry exists inside the map or it's going to be false if it doesn't exist so we'll set that to responses 
And then we're going to pass in channel dot, no, not m dot channel ID, channel dot ID. Since this is the channel of what was created of the direct message channel that was created between the bot and the user. Okay, so then I'm going to put a semicolon here and then pass in OK. Actually pass in not OK. So we're essentially saying if this, if there's no active responses being tracked by our application here, that's where the, the exclamation point OK comes into play, then what we're going to do is create one of those uh, answer structs. We need to initialize the entry inside of that map. So I'll type in responses and channel dot ID is going to be equal to a new answers object. And then we will set the origin channel ID to M dot channel ID. This is important because we're passing inside of the user prompt handler the message that our bot caught from the Discord server and not the direct message between the bot. And then for our favorite food, we'll just set that to an empty string and our favorite game will also set that to an empty string. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is s that channel message send. So we're going to send a message to a channel through our session and it's just going to be channel dot ID. And then we're going to first ask, say, Hey there, here are some questions. And then we're going to duplicate this and then I'm going to send the first question for what we want to do. What's your favorite or favorite food like that? OK, so now we have the logic set up. If there is if there's no active, um, if the bot is not actively waiting for a response from the user. However, if the bot is waiting for a response for the user, um, we're actually also going to send a message to the user and tell them, hey, we're, we're still waiting for something. So we'll say s channel message send. And then we'll pass in our channel.id. And then we'll say we're still waiting. And let's put a smiley face there because why not, right? Everybody's got to love some emojis. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that and let's run it now and just kind of see what happens here. So I'll type in go run main go. And we can see the bot is online. Let's over discord and see how it looks. Okay, so I actually have a fresh a fresh channel in here just to clear out any kind of testing I was doing ahead of time. So I've been go bot prompt. Hit enter. And you'll notice in the upper left hand corner, I've got two new messages from our bot, which should be the first one asking us, telling us we'd have some questions for us and the second one asking our first question. Now, here's our first message we got. Hey there, here are some questions. And then what's your favorite food? So I'll say my favorite food is tacos because tacos are bomb. And even though I sent something back, we haven't written the logic to actually handle the responses. So we're going to go ahead and head back into the code and do that now. Now DMs from our bot are actually going to come in through the same main handler up here on line 35. So what we need to do is make some changes to this method. So this way we can properly handle responses from our bot. So if you recall from the previous couple of videos, the first thing we have, the first chunk of code we have here basically will ignore any messages that are spent that are sent by the bot specifically. And then on line 40, what we're doing is we're splitting up the contents of the message by a space and then checking to see if it matches that prefix of go bot. Now, since Users are not going to type an exclamation go bot with every single time they respond inside of a direct message. We actually can make some space up here to handle this logic to, to, to handle DMS before it hits the, the main portion of the logic. So I'm actually going to type in, uh, let's see, server logic, and then we'll type in a new comment here for uh, DM logic. Okay. So the trick to check to see if this is a DM versus uh, coming from a server is the M dot guild ID will actually be no, it'll well, no, it won't be nil. I'm sorry, the M dot guild ID will be set to an empty string. So we can check this with if M dot guild ID is equal to an empty string, everything inside of here will be a direct message. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in order to handle this is we need to check if there is any act if we're tracking any active questions at the moment. And this time when we check that map, we actually do want the value back. So I will type in answers, and then okay, and then responses, and then let's pass an m dot channel ID. Because even if the guild ID is empty, the channel ID will still be populated. And if it is a direct message, it should correspond with one of the entries inside of our map. So if not okay, 
we're just going to return. Okay. So if there's, if somebody sends a DM to our bot and there's no active and we're not tracking any question responses, we just want to bomb out. We don't even want to proceed at this point. So now we need to check to see which, which questions were already answered. Because if you just, if we're just taking the user's input and populating something with it, we need it, it will continue to basically go on forever. So the way that we can try we inside of our code, we know that we have two questions that are going to be asked. It's the first one is going to be for a favorite food. Second one's going to be for a favorite game. So if answers that favorite food is empty, then we know that we're still waiting for a response to the first question. So we could say answers dot favorite food is equal to M dot content, which will be the content of um, the user's response. And then we need to send the follow up question. So S dot channel message send. And then we're going to send that to M dot channel ID. And then we're going to send great. What's your favorite game now? Oh, got an extra M over there. OK, S dot channel message send. Since this answers object is not a pointer, this is essentially going to be a new object in memory for Go. So we need to reassign this back into our responses before we can proceed. So to do this, we will say responses and then chan m dot channel ID is going to be equal to answers. Fix the responses there. OK, so if once the question has been answered, we're populating the favorite food field with the content of the message, asking our follow up question and then and then storing the updated object back into that map. And then finally, we'll return. And then the last thing we need to do here is um, basically do the same thing and handle it if that first question is already responds is already tracked. So if favorite food does have content in it, we know that that question was answered and we can ask the second question. So we'll say answers dot favorite game oh, favorite game is going to be equal to M dot content. And then we're just going to log this out log dot print LN answers. Actually, we're going to do print F to format this and then percent V and then percent B and then we'll pass in answers dot favorite food and then answers dot favorite game. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do here is if we just leave it as is, the application is going to always think that we're consistently or constantly asking the user some questions or trying to get some feedback from the user. So we need to clear out that entry from the map. And we can do this with de the delete function. It's a global function delete. And then pass in the map itself, so responses. And then we're going to pass in the key, which is m.channel ID, and save this. Okay. So let's get this bot running again and then test the whole flow. All right, back in Discord, I'm going to type in go bot prompt. Hit enter. We'll get our direct messages again. We'll say what our favorite food is. So I'll say tacos. Here's our follow up question. What's the favorite game? If anyone knows me, you know, my favorite game is destiny too. Okay. And nothing happened here, but back inside the code, we could see here are two answers. The first is tacos and the second is destiny too. So the last thing we're going to do in this video is we're actually going to use some information we learned in the previous video, and I'll show you how to create an embed off of this object and drop it inside of the channel. So what I like to do, especially when I'm converting things with inside of Go, is I will create method functions, which I can use to convert between different structs inside of Go. So let's create it. Let's write underneath our answer struct that we created earlier. Let's create, let's add func. We'll say A is going to be a pointer to answers. And then we'll say to message embed, which is going to be the name of our function. And it's going to return discord go dot embed. Uh, dot message embed. Okay, so this is the signature for our function. And we're going to use the embed fields in order to kind of make our responses uh, look a little bit nicer. Okay, so I'll say in fields is going to be equal to this is going to be a slice of point of a pointer to discord go dot message embed field. Okay, and the first thing we need to populate is the name. So we'll say favorite food is going to be the name of the field that's going to be displayed inside of the embed. And then the value is going to be a dot favorite food. So we're taking the reference to the object we're calling this method on and then pulling that favorite food off of there. And then we're going to basically do the same thing with uh, the favorite game. So name favorite game and then value be a dot favorite game. Populate our commas there because Go likes that. And then finally, we're going to return discord go dot message embed 
And then the title is going to be new responses. And then we're going to set the fields property to fields. Like that. And this will handle the logic of converting our answer struct into a message embed. So now if we scroll down uh, into this main uh, message handler here where we're handling the responses from the DM, instead of logging out those to the console, let's get let's get rid of that line of code and we will say embed is going to be equal to answers dot to message embed, which is going to give us our embed object. And then finally, uh, session dot channel message send. channel message embed send, send embed, there we go, send embed. Uh, we will set this to um, answers dot original channel ID, which is going to be the original channel where the where the, the command was issued, and then we'll pass in a reference to embed. Uh, sorry, a reference to embed, like that. Let's go ahead and save this. I'm going to stop the bot from running and run it again, and let's head back over to Discord and see how this whole thing works. All right, let's go bot prompt again one more time. Okay, we have our responses. So what's the favorite food? Well, let's actually say breakfast burritos now. Because you can't go wrong with breakfast burritos. And favorite game. You know, here's a, here's an oldie. Let's go uh, Super Mario World. You're as old as me, Super Mario World is still the best Mario game of all time, okay? And then back inside of the Discord server, we can see we have this nice looking embed new responses, a favorite food of breakfast burritos and a favorite game of Super Mario World. After watching this video, you should be comfortable writing Go code necessary in order to DM users with Discords as well as handle their responses appropriately. Uh, if you're into this kind of content, do me a favor, sub to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, uh, give it a like and hit that bell notification. I said that all in the wrong order, but Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.